the rolling pin. And it's like the pizza doesn't want to become round. It's like I'm not ready to be stretched. It's like when you're still in bed, like it's the middle of the night. Oh, I don't want to get up. I want to be in bed. Let me sleep for five more hours. See you in the morning. Today we are reacting to Lydia Bastianich pizza recipe. The video has lots of views. Let's see if the views are worth it. Buongiorno. Buongiorno Lydia, buongiorno. Benvenuti to Lydia's Italy. Ah, hello Lydia's Italy. Lydia's Italy in America. And today we are in New York, New York City. New York, New York. Good morning, New York City! Today we're gonna cook pizza. Yum. First you need a good dough. Uh, a little bit of- Dough is everything. Of warm water, some yeast, just a little bit of, of sugar, and the sugar. When you say some yeast, how much yeast are you using? Important to, to tell us. Just a little bit of, of sugar, and the sugar is the food for the yeast, and you actually meant to add some flour so the yeast starts to activate and it's going to be hungry. So you give him flour, which is the food. The yeast wants to eat the flour. And it will begin to activate. Here we have flour and a little bit of salt. You know what flour you got, it's important to know. Uh, you can use any flour, of course, but um, if you use high proteins, flour, pizza flours, you do a better job. Uh, we could go just like that, step by step, but sometimes I think, especially in a mixing bowl, and especially if the mixing bowl is turning, you know, doing this will kind of just help you to lead it right in there. That's a good homemade technique. And it directs it so you don't make the mess. So you know when you have the wheel turning, uh, this... I like that she's using the dry first and then she's going to add the water a little bit at a time. I started using this method, which is more of a baker's method, and pizza chefs have started to, I believe, and lots of people believe, is the best way to make a pizza dough. Instead of starting from the wet, from the water, and then you add into the water. Instead, add the water into the dry ingredient. And very easy because, of course, all dry ingredients. Slowly introduce the wet ingredient. Okay, so I'll just change the paddle to a hook so you can really knead it, or you can just knead it by hand. Of course, uh, by hand is nice because you feel it, you know, you, you exercise. You don't need the gym. You make a pizza dough, you exercise. Uh, but, you know, the same mixer does such a beautiful job for you, sometimes even better than you, to be honest. So, you know, it's all about reaching the temperature and kneading it very well. So you need to knead it well and reach a temperature of about 23, 24 Celsius degree. Let's just oil. Like my friend Johnny from Grady in Melbourne would say, no, don't put extra virgin olive oil, homemade. Um, yes, you can do it, I think it's, it's fine. We'll let it rise here so you Use your hands. Why would you dry it like that? Like keep your hands nice and oily and keep the oil in there. Now you will remove the oil with the kitchen paper. Let's all oil it lightly so that it glides up easily as it rises. Okay. That should be. It has a nice feel. So let's put the dough in the bowl so it will rise. Let's just cover it with saran so it doesn't form a film and it kind of builds a little bit of of its own heat in there it is important to to um you know, to cover it you don't want that surface to become dry otherwise you, you have to try the dough so i normally what i do now is um wet a cloth like a kitchen towel um wet it squeeze cover it and then i put the glove glove wrap or plastic wrap on top to unseal it I don't want any here to go in. I don't want the dough to dry. Just like that. Let me go double around. 
Here we go. In half an hour, should be up. We'll punch it once down and then we'll make our pizza. Excuse me, half an hour? How much yeast have you used for this? Second, I will leave it half an hour, even two hours, out of the fridge. Even longer than that, to be honest. And then I put it in the fridge overnight. It's all about having a lighter dough. Taste the dough. More fragrant. If you let it ferment it or uh, rest, let's put it that way, overnight, you know, for 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, you have a better and better dough. You don't do anything. The dough does the job. The fridge does the job. You just leave it in the fridge. If you do this in half an hour, you're going to have a very heavy dough. The yeast will grow in your belly. It will be, you will drink a lot of water. And then, and, and you won't be fragrant. It won't be tasty. You didn't give enough time to the, to the dough to grow, to rise. And you want a nice spongy dough just like this? It is nice, of course, but don't be fooled by how spongy it is. Let's cut it in four. And I'm not talking about Napolitan here. Any, any type of pizza needs to rise. You know, it doesn't matter if it's Napolitan or whatever. It needs time. Okay, it depends on how much water you use, which I don't believe she told us how much water she used. It depends on uh, how much flour you use, the hydration. Cut it in four because out of this dough, I will get two pizzas and then we'll make the calzone out of the rest. Well, I wanna know how much uh, is the pizza bowl. Time to deliver a pizza bowl. Time to deliver a pizza bowl. You know, normally I do 250 grams, 270 grams. Uh, that's Napoleon, because I like Napoleon, but I use the same amount for other pizzas too. But how much is that? Looks like it's more to me. So let's just put this out. I will. Um, first, you didn't make a pizza bowl, so the pizza bowls. Uh, you didn't make pizza bowls, so they didn't rise. Like, you make pizza bowls, you have to. Doesn't matter what pizza star you make. Make the pizza bowl, rest it, covered and then they rise, and then when you get them, you can stretch them. At the moment, you got triangle pizzas. Unless you make a triangle pizza, but you know, you, you know, even a triangle pizza, it doesn't work that way, uh, Lily, I'm so sorry. We'll work one of these doughs into a pizza. See, it doesn't stretch. Can you see it's not stretching? It's not stretching. Like you have to use a rolling pin, but even with a rolling pin, you stretch it and it will go back. The elasticity is not there, it's not elastic enough. Stretch, Stretch it out, it out with, your, with, your, with, your, with your, fingers. your fingers. My grandmother, who is a great cook, amazing cook, she comes from the town of Teramo, a small village. Pizza is not famous there, but they still made it. My grandmother used so much yeast. And she makes the dough in the morning for the afternoon, you know, like for the night. She keeps it in the oven. It rises a lot, right? There's lots of oil, there's lots of yeast. It's heavy. It's beautiful. It's, of course, the tomato sauce on top, the mozzarella on top is beautiful. The dough is nice. But I can't, I don't need it anymore because, you know, it's like very old school, very nice, very rustic, but it's very heavy. Like she uses like 25 grams of yeast, fresh yeast. It's a lot. It is a lot. As much as you can. And, and she's not stretching. Then just kind of you roll it around. I don't really want to do that because, I mean, it depends on the pizza you're making. Of course you can do it. Don't want to say that, but look, like it's, you're really stressing out this, this press dough. It with the rolling pin. And... It's like the pizza doesn't want to become round. It's like, I'm not ready to be stretched. It's like when you're still in bed, like it's the middle of the night. Oh, I don't want to get up. I want to be in bed. Let me sleep for five more hours. See you in the morning. Stretching it just like that. Yeah, she's trying very hard. Don't be afraid to handle the dough with the back of your hand. Just slightly pull it so your knuckles kind of pull the dough apart. That's okay. It's a, a good technique to use. I still use it. It's nice. Stretching it. If you have a peel that you can put your pizza on, that's great. You of course it's great, yeah. Put some... Uh, Cornmeal or semolina. Yes, yeah, semolina is what I use now for any pizza, and it's great. And and you put it right, right on. But otherwise, 
This will work very well. This is very good, actually. Very good. Uh, very good because she is using the baking paper and the tray from the oven. What I will do is I will warm it up very. Of course, if you have a stone, it's better. Pizza stone, but not everybody can have it, even though it's cheap. Um, basically, yeah, you you warm up the tray so it's nice and hot. When you put the base on top, it can go straight in the oven so that the base will cook too. Just put back of a sheet pan. You put some too much flour. You don't need to put flour on baking paper. It won't get stuck. So don't put flour. Baking paper is great. Parchment paper, and then you bake it right on the parchment paper. What's important about a pizza is the temperature of the oven. So you that's right. You crank up your oven the hottest that you can get it. Yes. And you know, usually 550 is what a regular home oven will go to. Those pizza ovens go up to eight, nine hundred. If you have a normal oven, you just need to part bake, which means you need to put tomato sauce on top. Put in the oven until the base is cooked. And then uh, you put the cheese and all the toppings and you cook it for two extra, three extra minutes or until the cheese is melted. It in, in depends on the temperature of your oven on how long it will, it will bake. I have here a little bit of fresh tomatoes. That, that means fresh from the can. Nice. If you want to flavor it, just crack some garlic in there and put it in. <clears throat> Come on, mannaggia Lidia, che garlic, non è una mia pasta. Mi tomato sauce, non puoi toppings, but garlic on the pizza margherita, it's a big no no. Come on Lidia, you know better than that. Pizza margherita is, some mazzano tomatoes, pecorino cheese or parmigiano cheese, basil, extra virgin olive oil, and mozzarella cheese. Or buffalo mozzarella if you want to take it to the next level. Cook it, and you want the pulp, don't get it too wet. It's nice if you're using the nice peeled tomatoes, nice. Nice dry mozzarella. It's too early. The, the mozzarella will dry because the base needs to cook first. The base needs time. In the normal oven, could be five minutes. Could be six, seven minutes. You need to check the bottom, okay? If you use basil, I learned this from Franco Pepe, the best pizza chef in the world. You get basil, put it on the pizza first, on the sauce first, after you part bacon. Then you put the cheese on top of the basil so the basil doesn't burn in the oven. If the basil burns in the oven, it gives you no flavor. Okay, but instead you hide the basil under the cheese and it will give it a little bit of flavor. What Franco Pepe does instead, instead of cooking the basil, he makes a basil, like he mix the basil with extra virgin olive oil, blend it, and then keeps it in the fridge. So once the pizza is ready, it, it, it squirts the basil sauce, let's call it, on top of the pizza, nice and cold. So when you eat it, you have these beautiful flavors from the basil. You have the hot tomato, hot cheese, and this beautiful cold basil. It's a beautiful experience. You could sprinkle it with grated cheese if you like, just to give it a little extra crunch. A little bit of basil. No. Just like that, you put it in the oven. That's the pizza verace, the real... First is verace, not verace. And this is not verace, I'm sorry. You got garlic in there. The mozzarella is cut with. There's an extra virgin olive oil. As they do it in Naples. No, they don't do this, because in Naples the dough rises between 8 hours and 24 hours. Between 8, 16 or 24 hours, depends on the pizzeria. In half an hour, nobody makes a dough in Naples, sorry. So you take it like this, you have a stone in the oven, which is... That would be great. It's nice and hot. And you just slide it, it will slide right off with the parchment paper on the stone, and you have your pizza. All right, the pizza is ready. See, see how the cheese is burned. I know the quality is not great, but the cheese is burned. The, 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 the basil is burned. This is fine. We don't know if the bottom is cooked. She didn't, she's not showing us details. I want to see details of this pizza. And of course, I want to taste. Woo. Rest it just a few minutes and let me, let me. It doesn't look like the dough is cooked, it looks uh, raw. This is fucking raw! I made this mistake myself, you know? Um, I've learned how not to do this, and I can tell that's what happened. Look how dirty it is. You know, you wanna be a beginner or make a... Uh, look, of course I will fill you up, but if you do wanna be a better pizza maker, or you wanna enjoy pizza a little bit better, eat better, try to make a few improvements, you know? but. Um, 
Yeah, half an hour though, it's no, no, Lydia, I'm so sorry, Lydia. I'm sure you know how to make it now. This video is from six years ago, but yeah, maybe delete this video, Lydia. Thank you, thank you. Guys, the reason why I'm doing reaction videos is because we can improve. We can improve the way we eat, the way we cook, and the way uh, we ferment the pizza, the way we enjoy the pizza of fragrant pizza. Let me know if you want me to react to more of Lydia uh, videos. Um, her son is a master chef, so they must be a very good cook. So I didn't, I didn't expect this from her. So let me know what you think. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate reaction video. E ora si mangia. A carbonara with no cream. I don't want this pizza.